Welcome back, everybody. Tone to Shields, Rob Ellis, hanging with you on this Monday. Hope you had a great, great weekend. Good week in in front of you. Uh, that's for sure. So, you Tone, know what? Uh, oh, you know, Rob, real quick. Speaking of just good weeks and just good vibes, right? Yeah. You know, I'm not going to make you think too far back, but let's just say past five years. All right. What do you think was the most exciting, maybe the happiest, you know, you felt in the past five years? Uh, too far back, or should I go three years? I go five. Uh, let's okay. see. All right. So, uh, 2019. My son graduated high school in 20. Okay. It was re- really cool, but it was really difficult because it was during the pandemic. Right. I remember you telling me about that. That was a challenge. Um, my daughter graduated high school last year, which is really cool um, to see for her. So, that was kind of neat. Um, I'd say those two were, were, were really, really fun moments for me to watch them accomplish something in their young lives, uh, you know, with certainly more to come, hopefully. Um, but I thought that was pretty neat. How about you over the last five oh, years? Man. Last five years. One thing that comes to mind instantly, uh, last five years, I got, what are we? Yeah. I got married in 2021. So, there you so, go. so, so, so that was a good tremendous- answer. That better be number one. Okay. Of course, of course. The wife is probably somewhere. Uh, exactly. Listen, she she, she might she if might not, be, she might somebody be, will tell her about it. If not, it yes. is, it, listen, she might be on she might be on a roof right here behind oceans. You never know. Um, Correct. So yeah, uh, getting married in twenty one that was one of the happiest moments of my life for sure. Um, my mom getting her new kidney on Mother's Day. Oh that, man, that that happened uh, last year. My mom got a new kidney. She suffers from um, a form of a uh, kidney failure, but she's doing way better now. She's great. Awesome. She moves around, you know, she flew out here, you know, a couple weeks ago. So she's good. Um, but yeah, that so that was number two. If I had to give you a third one, um, taking a leap of faith and moving to Texas, you know, mm-hmm. that was different. You know, I grew up in, like Philly is all I'd ever knew. Sure. You know what I mean? All my life. Um, and you know, it was a change of pace and it was different, but overall yeah. I'm, 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 I'm pretty, I'm pretty, um, I was optimistic about it then. I'm still optim- optimistic about it now. So yeah, I think those are the three moments. Um, Getting married, my mom getting her new kidney, and then uh, taking a leap of faith and moving to a new state. Good ones, man. I like all yeah. three. That's all strong. Yeah. Good. Good. Same I'm with you, man. You know, you're 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 a true family guy, man. And uh, you know, I, I look at you as like um, I aspire to be the father that you are. Oh, man, thank you. Uh, no, yeah. I look. It's hard. It's not. But it's 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 the most challenging but most rewarding job in the world. And you're gonna have days where you're like, what? What? I would say to my, why do we have kids? And yeah. then there's other days where you're like, I can't imagine my life without. So it, yeah. it's. Uh, it's like anything else, man. If it's worthwhile, you got to put the work in. Yeah, you know, definitely. not everybody scratches a lottery ticket off and wins a lottery and everything's easy. You know, definitely. you got you to put your work in to, to have success with it. Definitely. And live chat, I want to know about you guys too. The past five years, what was the most happiest things you've experienced over the past five years? You know, maybe some good, maybe some bad that turned into good. But for you guys, past five years, what was the most exciting or happiest moments that you guys felt? Name as many as you want. I don't care, but I want to hear it. I want to see it. I want to see the uh, the positivity in you guys' lives right now. Yeah, so I like it. it. I like it. We're getting some good, nice emoji there. <laughs> That's uh, hilarious. <laughs> left the Northeast a decade ago. Best decision. Southern Southern living is real. Uh, Kevin can read late with the uh per- <laughs> parody thing uh uh good ones I-, I like these though you know moving back to north carolina in 2019 that's okay. cool man that-, that is very very cool uh for everybody yeah again you want to chime in uh please feel free Absolutely. flexing and stepping oh my god yep stimulus checks there you go <laughs> uh it's, it's i like spa city shop that's cool sun nice. being born like yeah uh, very cool very cool man very um, Good stuff from everybody, Dre. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, all right. So uh, one other thing I wanted to mention before we dive back into the Eagle stuff was, so Philadelphia is one of the cities to get the 2026 uh, World Cup. So there'll be six games played here at Lincoln Financial Field. Uh, the, it, they ended up giving the the final to MetLife uh, in, in North Jersey. But here's the good news. Be- before everybody goes into panic mode that these guys are just going to be ripping their knees up in, in MetLife, they will be replacing that crap turf with natural grass. Oh, at all. So it, so it is possible. So, so the World Cup's willing to pay for that, but the the NFL that sneezes and makes a billion dollars is not. Interestingly enough, but but that is good news though, at least for the cities that have World Cup games and Philadelphia, and and I and as it should, there'll be games played on July fourth in twenty twenty six, which is great. That's pretty cool. Yeah, man. 
That's yeah. pretty cool. I I wonder how much those tickets are going for. Um oh geez. I I couldn't even tell you, man. I could not even tell you. Well, we got some we got some other good ones here. Um moving to the South after Super Bowl 52, best decision you made. Uh having both kids crazy. I left Philly uh to Chicago area seven years ago. Okay. Bought a house before the market went at to absolute garden. Smart M A M. The smart man. All right, here's the here's a huge one from Kevin. Wow. Congrats, Kevin. Wow. Continue. Kevin, that's oh, um continued help. Uh Kevin, found the Kevin, love of truly. your life. I love that. Okay. All right. Uh <laughs> happiest I was the last few years of the pandemic, not having to deal with traffic. I all right, let me tell I can speak to that in a second before we get to everything else. Uh let's see. James just got married. Congratulations, very, very James. Cool. Okay, so here's here's what I will tell you. For those of us who kept working through the pandemic yes, uh, and didn't a... necessarily just work at home, it, the, the the roads were eerie. Exactly. Okay. So when you work crazy hours like I do in radio and TV and all and, and all the other platforms, um I, you know, I would I would sometimes leave to go to work either late at night, early in the morning, middle of the night, whatever, to go to, to do certain shifts. And I am not kidding you, Tone. On a 35-minute commute, not see one car on the road. Damn. And it, it feels like a weird movie where it's like an apocalypse and, and everybody, the, the, you're, you're looking around like, am I like still asleep? I haven't seen a car yet. And I'm talking about, for people who can relate to the Philadelphia area, being on major highways. It's bustling. 476, 76, the Schuylkill. Uh, Market Street, Chestnut Street, Walnut Street, and not seeing people driving, dude. Like, bizarre. Very bizarre, yeah. I, at that time, I was work I had an office job. Uh, you know, I was, I was a property manager, so I had to, you know, constantly, you know, make sure I was, you know, I was still working through the pandemic, Um, thank God, you know. Yep. And it was, and it was just, it was so strange. Yeah. You know, it's like, Philly is such a bustling city, city no matter where you are, you're always going to hear something. Yep. And to be out there those mornings and some of those evenings and moving around, it was just very eerie. Something out of something out of just like what was what was that movie where everybody kind of disappeared? Yeah, it was like the day after tomorrow and stuff like that. Just yeah, like, yeah. Or like um, you ever seen The Mist with um with Thomas Jane? No, I haven't seen that one. And and Barbara, by the way, we talk about everything. So just just so you know, you know, the large majority of what we do is sports, but we do jump around. I mean, so. we, I mean, we are humans, right? You know, yeah. we, we 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 could talk about regular stuff, you guys. It's the it's off okay. season. It's okay. Lo loosen up, Barb. Loosen yeah, up. We got okay. you. It's all right. We'll be all right. You know, we won't go up in flames. We'll, we'll get there. Trust <laughs> me. Barb, we love you. No, but but yeah, I mean, I think it's left behind. I think is what uh, Soul Vane left said. behind. Is what it is. Yeah. yeah, I am. Legend. I am legend. Yep, good one. Yeah, with Will Smith. Um. Yeah, it was weird, man. It was weird. Pandemic was tough, like, um, obviously, on a million levels. But the, 2020, for me, I lost both of my parents. And not not to COVID, but I lost both of my parents that year. It was it was awful. So yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. So anyway, but but to, you know, to see the nice part of it is, like I said, my son graduated. Where there were some, some positives that came out of it. And all good. Yeah. All good. So uh, onward and upward, man. You keep grinding. Uh, sure. all, right, all right. So, uh, Eagles wise, and we were, we were talking about Jalen Hurts and we got really in depth into, into what we want to see from him, what we think Kellen Moore and Doug Nussmeyer, who's the new quarterbacks coach hire can do to, to, to get him back to the level that he was in 22. So let, let's put Jalen aside for one second here and let's go, go through the three things, uh, that we, we need to see from this team. And, and here's what we'll do, Tone. We'll each take one a piece, not reel off our, our three. Okay. Um, you want to go with your first? Please feel free, or I can jump um, in. Whatever you want. No, no, I, I got you. Uh, right. you know, this one isn't necessarily, and I, I didn't really rank them. I just listed three things, and this one isn't necessarily on the field. It's more so off the field, more so business related. Yeah, I think the Philadelphia Eagles need to, need to get their books in order, especially with the cornerback room. Mm -hmm. Um, those contracts between Darius Slay and James Bradbury are killing the Philadelphia Eagles right now. Um, it's not really giving them too much flexibility at that position. And I think the contract, obviously Slay is, has more money tied up in his, but, you know, Bradbury, when you couple that with the production, you say to yourself, I can't see myself paying that man those numbers with knowing how he knowing how he performed. Yeah. And there's no way his representation can justify it. So um, if I'm the Philadelphia Eagles, I think they need to really take a long, hard look um, at how they're allocating resources at that position. I think they need to get younger there. 
Um, they, they have some young prospects. Don't get it twisted. But as far as starters go, they need to get younger and they need to get healthier. Mm -hmm. um, Darius Slay is not going to be able to play at the level he's playing at by so long. He already had a knees, um, a knee um, situation towards the end of the year. He'd been battling it all year. Avante Maddox, what are we going to do about him in the long term? Um, James Brabber, again, they got to figure out. They got to figure out how they're going to allocate resources at those positions. So I think um, they need to definitely figure out, uh, you know, to restructure, figure out a restructure. Whatever they got to do, they got to figure out that cornerback room uh, mm -hmm. almost and almost immediately. That's a good. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I, I would agree with that. And my number one ties into that. Coaching. Mm. Coaching. Your own head coach used the word stale when it came to their play calling and their scheme. His words, not our words, his words, stale. You better figure out, and maybe you know you answer the question with moving on for some of the coaches, but you better figure out how to not get stale again. Mm. Like you better keep that bread, you know, in, in, in the in the plastic, and you better keep the, the you know, your your little thingy on there <laughs> so it doesn't get stale real quick. Because if you get stale again, Nick, you're gonna be out of the job. So uh this needs to be fresh. It needs to be something that's innovative in some ways. It needs to be getting the best out of your players. And that goes for both sides of the ball, but especially on offense. If you don't stay ahead of the game, if you don't do what Andy Reid did, I know not everybody's Andy Reid and not everybody has Patrick Mahomes, but Andy Reid is a guy who's never afraid to be innovative and take chances and try and, you know, do things that wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily think a guy who's been around as long as Andy does. And you better look back and look at yourself in the mirror and figure out why it got so stale with you. And I right. think coaching is, is, is enormously big for this team next year. Right. Right. Just to, to just say things got stale. It's like, this is your baby. This is your product. And, 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 and you're saying, um, you know, it got stale. That's, that's alarming to see. That, that's alarming to hear. Excuse yep. me. Um, yeah. Uh, for me, my, my, my next one. And again, I didn't really rank these. I just listed them. Um, my next one, uh, and it kind of goes into what you were just talking about. They need to iron out and commit to an offensive identity. For, in my humble opinion, I feel like the Philadelphia Eagles were playing tug of war with who they wanted to be all year. Did we want to pass the ball? Did we want to run the ball? You know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, the organization wants one thing, but the personnel uh, is, 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 is uh, indicating another. And, you know, your team is struggling in the air. Let's lean it was just so much herky jerkiness about the offensive identity. Um, you know, uh, last season, and then you couple that with the turnovers by the quarterback. Um, you know the uh, you know the, the questionable um route combinations. Uh, and that's what I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what Kellen Moore can bring to the table. You know, John and I talk about this a lot, and you know his perspective is. You know, it's always about the players, you know, coaching. Yeah, their job is to make you a little bit better. But the onus is always more so on the players. And I and, and I, I agree with him to a certain extent. Um, yes, the players go out there and play. And when you have talent, you're likely going to win the game. But I also say this, you know, as coaches, you have a responsibility to develop route combinations and develop an offensive identity or framework that can accentuate the talents of your personnel. Yep. And throughout the season, all year, we kept saying to ourselves, what are they doing out there? Why is it taking so long for these routes to develop? Is these guys are too talented to not be able to get open? Yeah. Um. And then when you swap, and then when you watch the All Twenty Two, and you listen to commentators that you respect, like a Greg Olson or like a Troy Aikman, you hear them talking about, you know, why are why are the Philadelphia Eagles running these route combinations? They're, Just go they're back, Tone, and listen to that Tampa game. Listen to what Aikman says if you if, if you have time. He, he it's a masterclass of this is a joke. What I'm seeing. I, I'm telling you, he takes him apart. And Aikman's not a hot taker or something. Right. Dude yeah, he's a Cowboys attention. guy, but he's he's pretty, pretty. He plays it pretty. I agree. I think he's right the there. I yeah. do. And and he, man, he kills him in that game. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no. You're absolutely right. I mean, you you nailed it. It's the bottom line is it's unacceptable to have guys that talented on the field, and and under any circumstance, you you can't put route combinations that accentuate with their skill sets or help the quarterback get the ball out of his hand early again. You know, I have a hard time believing Devontae Smith and A.G. Brown couldn't get open. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time believing that Jalen Hurts was back there just holding the ball because, you know, he was just scared to throw it the entire time. I, I firmly believe there were, there were moments throughout the season, many moments where he was looking out there and just saying, I, I can't throw the ball over there because they're too close to each other. It's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a walking time bomb. So 
I, 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 I'm looking forward to Kellen Moore and, and, and Doug Newsmeyer and even Nick Sirianni, whatever he can offer at this point. I'm looking forward to seeing what new wrinkles they can provide to accentuate the talents of these, you know, uh, you know, the, to accentuate the talents of their personnel. Again, the offensive identity, in my opinion, is uh, one of the things that I think needs to be fixed along with um, the cornerback room. Uh, what's your next one? I'm going to go over. I'm going to go to um, this. This falls on Vic Fangio and Clint Hurt. What happened to the D line last year? It was the best defensive line in football the year before. 70 sacks. Uh, you know, number one against the pass. I mean, literally number one against the pass. Kind of middle of the pack against the run, but that didn't really matter because your pass rush was so dominant. How did you fall back to 43 sacks? Last nine weeks, you were gutted on the ground. And, you know, you have a lot of money invested in that in those positions, whereas in linebackers, you were kind of hoping. Safety, you were kind of hoping. You know, what happened to your D-line? Because you're not going to be able to fix everything on the back seven this offseason. you got to get your D-line right. So where Absolutely. where did it go wrong? Like, were you not playing to their strengths? Was it too much of, of Reddick dropping into coverage or sweat or whatever? you got to get to the bottom of that. Clint Hurt and Vic Fangio have got to figure out their D-line. That's a great point. Look, let's be frank about it. You only switched out really one guy. On that D line from 2022 to 2023, uh, you know, of importance, and that yeah. was Javon Hargreaves. Now, granted, I will say this as well that this this doesn't get talked about enough. Another big difference between 2022 and 2023 is the Philadelphia Eagles had legitimate depth at that D tackle spot. You know, along with Jordan Davis and Fletcher Cox and Milton Williams and Montu Pelotu, you had. Linval Joseph and Dominica Sue, you know what I mean? Those are legitimate guys who have been at the pinnacle of their position, right? Yeah. Cle clearly on the back end, but Linval Joseph was spectacular, in my opinion. So they lacked depth in key spots, hence why you saw a guy like Josh Sweat playing his, a career high in snaps. But ultimately, you're right. When you got a D-line that has this um, – that's this, that's this talented – and you think about the range of ages and how it's a good combination of veterans and youth and, you know, all that kind of stuff. You got three first round draft picks and Fletcher Cox, uh, Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter. You look at that D line and say, how is this even possible? Yeah. So, so that's why, you know, that's why when I hear people say, nah, it's no way Nick Sirianni lost his locker room. It's no way. I'm like, I have a hard time rolling with that. What we we saw a seven game demise, a seven week, eight week demise. It's right. hard for me to say with a straight face. Nah, he didn't lose the locker room. No, no way. I know, it's, man. I, I just I can't. Know. Like, I just can't roll with that. Two, three weeks, stuff happens. Right. Even yeah, yeah. Right. Two or three well, weeks. United okay. lost three straight weeks. That right. happens. Th this was way. We were way past that, and and it wasn't like, again, it wasn't where you're saying. Dude, the offense sucked. The defense only gave up 12 points per game. They showed up every week. If, if, that, if that was the case, then you just isolate it to something. Right. You'd almost feel better about this. I thought both sides really, you know, that, came That's the thing, right? You can't isolate the Eagles' issues. You no. can't. You can't You can't say, you know what? Okay, if they were better here, this would change. No, you cannot isolate their issues. Their issues were so overarching. Their issues was like a virus. And it just it it, it 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 was just literally just taking over yeah, parts of your everything. body. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. First it was a headache, then it was a sore throat, then it was you know the sniffles, and then now body weakness and aches, and it was just a virus. Mm -hmm. You can't sit here and tell me Nick Sirianni kept that locker room intact the entire time. You just can't. No, he didn't. Okay, and that's a fact. And that's again, this is where he's got to figure this thing out and just understand right. and why. Rob, that remember, case. players look for answers. You know, players, yeah, they're the talent, you know, and the 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 the, the, uh, the role coaches play is being able to make them better. And players respect coaches who can make them a little bit better, right? right? Just 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 some edge, you know. Players, they don't care about, you know, we always hear about, oh yeah, players didn't like this guy, that guy. Okay, yeah, that happens. But for the most part, I think above all else, if I had to guess, and I, I've never been, I've never been in an NFL locker room, all that kind of stuff. But if I had to surmise, and based off of the people I've talked to, players care about if you can make them better.
better? Can you get them out of a jam? Do you have the answers when things are kind of not where things are kind of looking bleak? Can you do? Can you figure those? Can you be a problem solver? Mm -hmm. And not one time through that eight week stretch or seven week stretch, however you want to slice it, was Nick Sirianni a problem solver? So again, how can we all say here? What is? Can we? How can some of us say, Nah, he didn't lose that locker room. It's all in the players. I mean, yeah, the players got to wear it too, but. Come on, man. I can't oh, say everybody. Nick, I, I can't. I can't say Nick kept that locker room on you know on the same page throughout that seven eight game stretch. It it, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. All right, give me your you have you have a third one. Yes, my third one is the linebacker room. Okay, and that's uh, newsflash, right? Uh, the linebacker room has to be just overhauled. Yeah. Um, it looks like if I had to if I had to guess, Zach Cunningham was probably going to come back on a one year deal, something like that. You never know. Um, but if I had to guess, it'd be him. And then yeah, the way the how he praised him in that press conference, I think Zach Cunningham's back. Right. And then the Kobe Dean, the way he, you know, hitches his wagon to him, the Kobe Dean is probably going to be penciled in as a starter. But in my humble opinion, you and I talked about this. The Kobe Dean should have to compete for every snap. He should have to compete for water. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. uh, he has to stay healthy, too. That's another thing. Um, but I think they need to um, add some depth to that position. It was a huge mistake um, rolling the dice on uh, Christian Ellis being able to make it do waivers. Huge mistake. Um, they need to reload in that position. They need, they need to get high quality talent, and I think they need to just ultimately alter the profile of the players they're going after at that position. Um, the Kobe Dean, he's a small dude, man, small dude. I think they need some more size back there, some more athleticism, some more length, and you know we'll see what happens. But I think that linebacker room is something that needs to be top priority. But we'll see, man. Nick, um, Harry Roseman is um a man who definitely leans on habit and procedure rather than um bucking the trend. Well, here, here, let me pick up on the linebacker thing and two things that scare me. One, uh, Zach Cunningham was the best of a bad lot. Right. That could be very dangerous. Like, you know, we heard, we heard last year about Nicholas Morrow in Chicago. Look at all the tackles the guy had. Yeah, he had a lot of tackles for a bad defense. And we saw what he was here. It wasn't special. So I worry about that a little bit with Zach Cunningham. I also worry, and we've, we've talked to Tone, three people, maybe four people who cover the team who all think that Kobe Dean will be penciled in as a starter. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't like either one of those two developments, frankly. Uh, it makes me think they'll probably go after one linebacker that they think can make a difference, but it should be more than that. It should be multiple linebackers that they're making priorities here. So, and I'm sure if you talk to those people that we spoke to on air, I'm pretty sure if you speak to them off air, they'll say they need to look beyond the Kobe Dean. I know. But ultimately, they're just speaking from the perspective of what they think the organization is going to do rather than what they think they should do. And right. I always no, wanna, that's I, exactly I, right. Yeah, and I always want to make that clear. Um, you know, most of the people that say likely Nicole Dean is going to be pissed in as a starter, they're operating from the perspective of what the team is likely to do rather than what they think they should. Because I'm pretty sure if you ask any reporter, they think they should um, probably draft the linebacker second round, maybe maybe higher than that. You never know. But that's not what the Eagles do. Yeah, exactly. All right. So that that I, I'm with you. And, and here's my last one. Talent. Talent. Yeah. Yeah. They lack talent. Okay? Yeah, they need more depth, yeah, depth and talent. Yep, yep. But that, that goes hand-in-hand. Hand. You're right. Talent and depth, it. yeah. You're not nearly talented at linebacker enough or at safety, at corner. Uh, you, you like, to me, at each of those positions, you can make a case to clean it out completely. Now, we know the, real, the reality of a salary cap. You're not doing that. You're going to roll with Slay again, which is fine. Uh, you can't roll with Bradbury again, um, and they might. And you, you're going to take a gamble probably on another year of Ante Maddox when he gets hurt every year for significant time. That's the, they're both, all those things are problematic. You need another safety. And I, I hope they don't just view it as, well, we'll get Sidney Brown back at some point. Like you can't bank on that. And, right. and he got hurt late in the year too, on top of everything else. So I, I hope that they don't just go the route of Sidney Brown, Eli Ricks, uh, Keely Ringo, everything's going to be fine. I don't think they will, but if they do, man, big mistake, Tone. They need to get like real proven guys in here or high pedigree guys coming out of college that you make your priority in the first and second, third round. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, the Eagles, they have some work to do in this offseason. Yeah. Let's not, you know, let's not be short about it. They, they have, they have an uphill climb. Um, I think. When it comes to getting his defense back on track, I think it's more than just a, a, sing, a single offseason that's going to take to get this team back on track. Um, we have seen situations where teams flip their fortunes in one season. We've seen it. 
Um, but typically those teams, they have money to spend. Um, they got capital or, or however you want to slice it. Um, the Eagles, from a, from, a, from a fiscal standpoint, they're a bit limited. And from a draft pick standpoint, I think they have nine right now. Maybe they get more. Right. Maybe they trade some away. You never know. But ultimately, um, they're kind of working with a they're kind of working with a short deck here. And we're going to see how savvy Harry Roseman can be. Yep, we are. We sure are. All right, let's hit it. Let's come back. Heath Pompey is going to join us. We'll get the latest on what's happening Heath. with Joel and Bede. Uh, we're going to swing it back to the birds in the next segment and one of the things we're going to discuss is breakout players and by the way tone and i don't want to overlook this and we won't overlook it we lost a great on friday yes. uh great uh carl weathers rest in peace but we will we will pay him some due as well since we haven't had the opportunity to talk about it and i know it would a fan you and i are both of his uh so we absolutely will do that as well when we come back but keith pompey Coming up next, don't go anywhere. He's Tone. I'm Rob. Let's talk about Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group because knowing who to trust with your finances is priority one. Uh, you work too hard, right? And it's too important to take care of yourself and your family uh, with, with someone who does not know what they're doing, okay? And I found the right person, and it's Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group. Whether it's retirement planning, 401k review, insurance review, you might have a small business and you need help with your employee benefits. That is another resource that Jim can help you with. I know I've entrusted my IRA, my 401k rollovers with Jim, and I couldn't be any happier. You will be too. Give him a call, 610-996-4751. 610-996-4751. Or you can email him as well, Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y, dot Jim at principal.com. That's Murray.